Jones. Yeah, that's good. Like that is good. What you just did. Just started. And then, yeah, 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 yeah. Good. There are many misconceptions about Hollywood that have been ingrained in the human psyche over the years. The first is that all these actors are great people, when we've slowly been shown that this is not the case. What's wrong with them? And they're as flawed as the rest of us. Secondly, that being an actor is the best job ever. Absolutely honored by this by this award tonight. I when recent events prove that this isn't the case either. And finally, many believe that the actors must absolutely love when they get to be part of the biggest Hollywood movies and series. And while that may be true overall at times, did you see her face? I mean, come on! Actors do have plenty of stories about scenes or bits that they weren't exactly fans of. With that, here now are 20 movie scenes that actors hated filming. Number 20. Margot Robbie Margot Robbie has gone from being a no-name actress in Hollywood with a lot of potential to easily being one of the biggest in the world. Just the success of the Barbie movie proves how incredible that she is and how she's been able to hold down a film. But for many, the first time that she was seen on the big screen was during David Ayer's Suicide Squad. The film had Robbie as the fan-favorite character Harley Quinn, who was making her true live-action debut via the film. Despite what critics felt about the film, fans were immediately in love with Robbie's Harley Quinn, and that led to her being used in many films afterwards. However, there were two things about that movie that she did not like filming at all. The first was her origin scene, when we got to see Harley Quinn being born. In the film, Joker takes her to Ace Chemicals and dunks her in the same vat of goo that he was born from as an act of love. And during an interview, Robbie would note that she actually hated that scene because of the chemicals getting everywhere as she tried to act it out. And she actually choked a few times while trying to get through it. She even defined it as being the worst thing that she'd ever done in her life. The second thing she was not a big fan of was her outfit. Killing kids. It's kind of a red flag. Yes, that Harley Quinn Suicide Squad outfit became iconic due to how she looked in it and the things in the film that she did while wearing it, but it was apparently really uncomfortable for her. She would note that certain things had sharp bangles on them, and it was rough, and she even noted that the makeup and wig that she wore was not the best. So, allow this to be a great warning to many of you. Yes, she became famous because of the role, but she absolutely suffered because of it, and that's only the first actor I'm talking about. Before we go on, like this video, smash the subscribe button, and click the notification bell right now, or this centipede will crawl on your face when you're sleeping. Number 19. Hannah Waddingham Now, if you don't know that name, it's okay. You do know who she is, though, and the show that she was on, Game of Thrones. That's right, it might not be a movie series, but it definitely played like one over the years. For much of its run, it was the biggest thing in all of television. It was revered for a long time for its writing, acting, and ability to deliver epic battles, and very uncomfortable scenes to watch. And that brings us back to Hannah Waddingham. Anna Waddingham played Septa Unella on the show. If that name doesn't ring a bell, well, she's the one who marched a naked Cersei Lannister through the streets of King's Landing, yelling shame as they went. It's easily one of the most popular memes on the internet since its birth during season six of the show. And you can easily find it today if you don't believe me. During the season six finale, Cersei got her revenge by blowing up the septum that had almost all of her enemies. No thought has ever given me great. The exception being Septa Unella. She had a much darker plot for her. After capturing her, she straps her to a chair and proceeds to waterboard her with wine, and then, well, I'll get to that. But what may shock you, though, is that according to Waddingham, that waterboarding shot was actually real. She was literally being waterboarded on the show. And just to be clear, to get the shot correctly, they had to have her on the table for about 10 hours. Even Lena Headey, who played Cersei, was uncomfortable with what was going on, but the crew kept on pushing forwards. Afterwards, Waddingham said that she had developed a bit of claustrophobia around liquid, which is terrible. Oh, and after nearly being waterboarded to death, she was left in the hands of the mountain. And you can guess what happened when they were alone. Number 18. Kit Harrington. 
And we're going to stay with Game of Thrones for a bit, where there have been plenty of horror stories to be talked about. We'll discuss Kit Harington. She was another no-name actor who got their biggest break on Game of Thrones for better and for worse. On the bright side, it led to him being cast in other things, which included a Call of Duty game, the Eternals from Marvel, and even meeting his real-life wife of which many cast members were at the wedding. Plus, his character of Jon Snow was consistently a fan favorite character and beloved right up until that final dismal season. Anyway, if you were to ask Harrington what the worst scenes to film were, he would easily tell you it was anything to do with dragons. At first, it may seem ironic given the brutal conditions of some of the cast, including him having to film in, and he didn't believe it at first when a certain queen of dragons kept complaining about those scenes. But in the final seasons, where Jon Snow gets to ride the dragon, he learns the hard way the price that one must pay to ride such a beast. In a famous behind-the-scenes video for the final season, Harrington admitted that there's a machine that is meant to emulate what it feels like to ride a dragon so that they can get certain shots. And uh, part of his crotch, we'll say, got caught in that machine and he was in extreme pain, yet he had to keep on shooting. The video's still there if you want to watch it. By the end of it all, he said not only was it the worst part, but that it was not acting and never will be. Do you suppose if he could have warned his younger self about the dangers ahead, he would have said, you know nothing, Jon Snow. Number 17. Nicole Kidman Now we'll move on to a true icon of the screen, that being Nicole Kidman. She's been a beloved actress for many years and has done everything from big blockbusters to superhero films across multiple generations to HBO series like Big Little Lies. In many ways, this show has been a huge boon to her recent career and proves that she absolutely still has it. The irony of that show isn't only the all-star cast, but it was an attempt by Kidman and co-star Reese Witherspoon to get the challenging and meaningful roles that they were seeking in Hollywood. He's been um, <clears throat> very loving. But they were not getting for one reason or another. The flip side of that is that Kidman had to do things that made her very uncomfortable on set, even though she would admit it was good for her to get into the mind of her character. One of those things was getting naked on camera or being very close to it. She would note that in certain episodes, she would get to a state of humiliation to the extent that she wouldn't get up after certain takes because she felt so vulnerable. She even admitted that she would be scared for a brief moment when someone came over to help her, but again, said that this also made her connect with her character more because she knew that many women had gone through the pain that her character had, and this was her chance to bring it to the screen. Considering the hit Big Little Lies was in its two seasons, she made the most of it and had the impact that she desired. Now, if we could only convince her to stop doing that ad in front of movies at AMC theaters. Number 16. Amelia Clark. For the record, I don't think that I intended for so many HBO shows to end up on this list, but that's what happened when a network like that is willing to go big, bold, and sometimes controversial to get what they want. That brings us back to Game of Thrones, because of course it does. Amelia Clark was another actor who got her big break on the series, for better and for worse. She's easily one of the faces of the franchise, and she was there from episode one all the way up until the series finale. However, she also had some not-so-fond memories of the show, and that included having to do scenes much like Nicole Kidman did, meaning very bare. Remember, when she was on the show in the first season, she was only 23 years old, and in that scene, and certain ones that would follow, she would ask to be naked. It's all right, really? Take her and leave us. Yes, Khaleesi. Due to that, she would get emotionally wrecked the night before filming those days, and she would be terrified of what she was asked to do. Despite going through acting school, she would be on the set naked and suddenly not know what was expected of her, and she would get imposter syndrome as a result. One of the reasons she was able to work through it was because of co-star Jason Momoa, who protected her and helped her through the more intense scenes that she had to do. But wait, there's more. Because of those scenes, she would later be cast in other roles where people behind the camera wanted her to be naked once again, and she refused, to which they would react by saying, you don't want to disappoint your Game of Thrones fans. And her response, F you. Number 15, Chris Evans. 
Now, this one is not so much of an actor hated a moment as much of a I can't believe that was real moment. In the Marvel Cinematic Universe, it is quite well known that the actors, both male and female, sometimes have to get into insane shape in order to complete the look of their roles. And when it came to Chris Evans, he and others were asked whether he was digitally enhanced during certain scenes where Steve Rogers is showing off his muscles. The answer is no, and they never have. And whether it's Chris Evans, Hemsworth, or Pratt, many of the actors who needed to bulk up for the role that they were in, and it was all natural. Even some of the crew couldn't believe how big they had gotten. In the case of Captain America Civil War, there's a scene where Steve Rogers had to hold a helicopter in place and his biceps would be on full display. <sighs> the shot was a creation of the Russo brothers who directed the film, and even they couldn't believe how jacked that he looked, and they even praised him for getting into such shape. The twist here is that the Marvel method, as it is known, for getting these actors into shape is not really for the faint of heart. Many times, the actors have to overhaul their bodies to get into the right shape, and when the movie is over, they then allow their bodies to get out of shape just so they can feel slightly normal. Chris Hemsworth was one who said it was intense getting into such shape, but apparently that's the regiment required to be in such a jacked up role. Number 14. Daniel Radcliffe There are many things that could be said about Daniel Radcliffe, including how he's the perfect example of what happens when a child star spends much of his teenage and young adult life in films and isn't allowed to be himself, and thus goes off the rails just a little bit. He has recovered though, as has been proven by the success of Miracle Workers on TBS, but going back to Harry Potter, the thing he hated more than anything else was Quidditch. He said that not only did it hurt, but if he was asked to come back, he wouldn't want to do any scenes like that again. No matter how much the game was liked outside the set, and to be clear, there are real-life Quidditch leagues in the world, Daniel Radcliffe was not fond of them at all. To be fair, sitting on a broomstick for long hours, well, that can be a little uncomfortable. The thing you have to remember is that to do those scenes, Radcliffe was on an elevated broom that likely had to do hard turns and go up and down to sell the moments of him being up in the air or on a Quidditch pitch. And when you're on that for quite a while, and given how thin a broomstick actually is, that's going to make for some sore and unmentionable places. Him and Kit Harrington would likely have war stories to share with each other, I would think. Number 13. Leonardo DiCaprio and now on to another big name actor who has basically ran the movie world for decades, giving us his talents and ability to embody characters. Leonardo DiCaprio is amongst the Hollywood elite for a numerous amount of reasons, and he has a cavalcade of actor nominations and awards to showcase just how good that he is. And yes, it did take him quite a while to earn the Best Actor award at the Oscars, but he eventually did it. He's played everything from Jack in the Titanic to Howard Hughes to incredibly violent characters, the ones who have been mauled by bears. It's a custom here in the South. Once a business deal has concluded that the two parties... But can you guess the role that he actually hated playing? Well, here's a hint. It was a movie that featured him in a charming yet violent character. None other than Quentin Tarantino's Django Unchained, where he played the role of Calvin Candy an evil plantation owner whose nature was fundamentally brutal. According to DiCaprio, he was quite apprehensive about portraying such a figure because it went against everything that he stood for. He went on to note that there was absolutely nothing that he could connect with in Calvin, and for good reason. At points during filming, he was straight up adhored by the language that he was saying and the actions he had to do. The only reason that he got through it was because of actors like Samuel L. Jackson and Jamie Foxx. They had encouraged him to take the character to the extreme because if he were to sugarcoat it, he would be called out for it. Ironically, it worked, and the film was both controversial and praised due to the performances of DiCaprio and the rest of the cast. Oh, and DiCaprio actually sliced his hand during one of the scenes and just kept on rolling with it. What a boss. Number 12. Indira Varma 
Now we're back to Game of Thrones, a show that's traumatized a lot of people both on and off the set. One of the more divisive storylines in the latter seasons was the rise of Sand Sisters and their mother. After the death of Oberyn Martell, the four went on a warpath to try and get revenge on those who had taken his life, which led to alliances with many others to get payback on the Lannisters, especially Cersei. But it did not work out for them. Two of the sisters would be killed in battle, and the mother and the youngest daughter were both gifted to Cersei to do with as she pleased. Oh, and she did do that. The Sands had already killed Cersei's daughter with a poison, so she returned the favor by locking the two of them up in a dungeon, kissing Tyene with that same poison, and forcing Ilaria to watch while chained to a wall. As fans would find out, the actress, Indira Varma, along with the actress for Tyene, were indeed tied up to that wall and forced to act out their very emotional scenes there. Needless to say, it was quite uncomfortable. At one point, filming had to stop and the duo couldn't be released from the manacles, and so they had to get a saw to literally cut those chains off. Clearly, the set needed a safety officer. Number 11. Shelley Duvall now, as noted in the intro, you may think that being in a big movie or one that's become iconic means that the actors loved every day on the set. For the classic film The Shining, that could not be further from the truth for Shelley Duvall. The director of the film was notorious for his desire to make every shot perfect, and that meant The Shining was filming for 56 weeks. Remember, that film wasn't one with a whole lot of special effects, but it did have a whole lot of intense scenes rolling and all that, and I got all ready and jump up and down and then... Not the least of which was the baseball bat scene that they had to do over and over and over again so that that shot could be absolutely perfect. According to those who were on set, the director demanded that she do the scene repeatedly because the repeated pace would force her to become more and more unnerved and thus put her in the right state of mind for the shot. And if that sounds abusive, well... That's because it is. And yet she had to endure it because no one would stop him from getting his art. That abuse would put her into a bad place both mentally and physically. Thankfully, she never had to be put in that kind of position outside of that film again. But even many years later, she still can't look on The Shining without feeling the pain of what she went through. Number 10. Anthony Daniels Long ago, in a galaxy far, far away, Yes, that's right, I'm talking about Star Wars, and no, I'm not making fun of the prequels, especially since it's debatable that the sequels were far worse. Anyways, I'm going back to the very first Star Wars film that was released in theaters, which was an experimental process for many who were involved. This included Anthony Daniels, who played C-3PO. Daniels would note that he was basically trapped in the suit because of how uncomfortable it was. No, I have read it, sir. I know exactly where the wayfinder And furthermore, because of his limited movement, he couldn't get around the set all that well. It also didn't help that after a while, people kind of forgot there was a person in the suit. No, really, they kept leaving him alone when he wanted to get out of the suit, and he felt like he was just an object on the set after a while. Perhaps that also says something to how good of an actor he is that they thought he was an actual robot or droid. That's definitely not the right way to treat a human being, or a droid, or both. Number 9. Jessica Alba Superhero movies, both then and now, can be hit or miss depending on the writing and the casting, and when the original Fantastic Four film was made, many people were not exactly pumped about Jessica Alba being Sue Storm. After filming the movies, though, Alba wasn't happy with her casting either. While the first film is better than many give it credit for, the sequel was not as beloved. And in an interview later on, Jessica Alba admitted that when she was doing her death scene in the film, she would be asked by the director to look pretty as she died. That's right, as her character was dying, the director wanted her to look pretty and cry pretty. At that point, she was questioning just about everything about her life and career, and she even said that she was considering quitting acting because of her treatment on the film. She didn't quit, but she did eventually move away from acting to become a prominent businesswoman. Number 8. Jennifer Lawrence 
Jennifer Lawrence is easily one of the most prominent actresses in the world today, and she's come a long way since being Katniss Everdeen in The Hunger Games, with the awards to prove it. But her other breakout role was that of Mystique in the rebooted X-Men franchise. She was there for all four main films of that line, and she didn't like being that character at all. Not that it wasn't a good role, but because of her blue form, she had to be in the makeup chair for about eight hours a day before filming her scenes. Mutant and proud. And moreover, she couldn't do things like go to the bathroom because of how the suit was constructed, which she put on the men making the suit. She also inhaled a lot of fumes during her time on the set, and it made her very paranoid later on. Number 7. Daniel Radcliffe again. We're going to be doing a double take, because when it comes to Daniel Radcliffe, there's actually more to talk about. Given all the things that happen in the Harry Potter movies from a plot standpoint, it would make sense that Radcliffe would have more than one uncomfortable experience. So if the broomstick was one thing he hated, what would be the other? Well, it is tricky, because he technically didn't hate this, but it was an intense challenge. Fresh water versus salt water. You're telling me this now? You must be joking. Every time that Harry Potter went underwater to do a key scene, that was Radcliffe. He never had a stunt double for those moments, so he was actually in the thick of it every time, and while he admitted that it was amazing, there were also some terrifying things he had to endure. Sometimes that's what you have to do as an actor, and to be clear, he was protected at all times, you know, in case things went wrong. Number 6. Leonardo DiCaprio Again with his long and storied career, we have to talk about Leonardo DiCaprio again. He's been in various films that were intense, but by his own admission, the one that pushed him the farthest, in the uncomfortable way, was The Revenant. As a friend, I could not have done this journey without you. Ironically, that's a film where he finally got the Best Actor award. But why was it so bad? Well, that's because they had to be out in the elements to get certain shots, which also meant having to do scenes in negative temperatures, which included 30 below zero. And that's more than enough to kill someone if given enough time. That was a problem because they had to shoot the scenes while exposed to the elements for several minutes. And while he did survive that experience, it did leave a clear mark as big as a bear attack. Number 5. The Hobbit's Barrel Scene whether you loved or hated the Hobbit trilogy, there's no denying that it had multiple scenes that struck a chord with audiences. In the second film, that would be the beloved barrel scene in which Bilbo Baggins and the party of dwarves had to go into barrels to escape from the elves. Given the choreography of the shot, it was a rather complex thing to do, mainly because the book only somewhat lightly touched upon what the barrels were going through as they went down the river and how the dwarves stayed in the barrels. They had to make a full-on wet set so that they could do everything they wanted with the actors, and it was definitely a process to get those shots made. But, you know, when you look at the results, it did work. All this for their long-forgotten gold. Number 4. Leonardo DiCaprio Once Again This time, I'm going to be talking about one of the films that Leonardo DiCaprio made his name on, that being Titanic. His role of Jack is iconic even to this day, and as a result, every scene with him is beloved. However, when filming the soon-to-be legendary film, DiCaprio and co-star Kate Winslet were not amused with one scene, that being the one that featured spitting. That's disgusting! <laughs> all right, here. They were really grossed out by it all, and so were many of the crew on set. They were constantly asking director James Cameron to cut the shot, but he refused, and when it came out, the scene became beloved, so sometimes you really do have to suffer in order to make great art. Number 3. Tyler Perry To put it lightly, Tyler Perry is a mogul. He went from being a simple actor who did a great character repeatedly to opening up his own production company that focuses on black entertainment of the highest order. He's done television, movies, and beyond, and he's very rich because of it and Medea. 0.9 million Negroes enslaved. Now that land is owned by one Negro. Yet despite her role in his life, he doesn't look back very fondly at her. In fact, despite moving on to bigger and better things, he has no interest in ever being Medea again. He wanted it to be a one-off role to pay tribute to Eddie Murphy, but people liked it so much that he felt that he was basically forced into keep doing it. 
He said that he was terrified of portraying a woman on the screen and hated the makeup, the wig, the costume, and everything. Medea was key to his career, though, so he's fine not doing anything with her again, and that's his choice two billion dollars later. Number 2. Emma Thompson Disney is in a curious place right now in the weirdest of ways because they're determined to keep making live-action movies of their beloved animated properties and characters, and many are left wondering how long it's going to last. A great example of this was Cruella, which co-starred Emma Thompson as the film's antagonist. You may steal my creation. I mean, that's a very good idea, right? If you uh... The film did quite well at the box office, and Thompson would be praised for her role, but she was very uncomfortable while filming. That's because, as a fashion mogul in the film, she would be forced to wear garments both above and below that she was uncomfortable in, and she even described it as being torture. You should do better, Disney. I know that you won't, but I needed to say it anyways. Number 1. Brad Pitt Now we've come to Brad Pitt, a man who has made many of an impression on people with his films. Surely a man of this caliber couldn't have hated anything that he's done, right? Well, when it comes to the movie Troy, he actually doesn't even like the film at all. He felt that his performance was mediocre, and he even admitted that he was only in the movie because of a contractual obligation. At the time, he was asked to do more commercially viable films to help both himself and the studios. Gina and Ridley give me my first shot to all the wonderful people I've met along the way. And another project that he wanted to do was canceled, and as a result, he had to do Troy. Even now, he can't quite put a finger on why his performance was not the best, but his lack of motivation towards the film in general was probably a good place to start. Not everyone is excited to be cast in a movie, no matter how big or with a star-studded cast. That's all from the realm of movies and television shows and talking about the times when actors really weren't feeling their roles. Were you amazed at some of the big-name actors who appeared on this list? or the times that they weren't happy, and should they have just kept their mouth shut and not complained because they were getting paid so much? Which of these scenes had you really feeling the actor in question? Let me know your thoughts and comments down below. You should check out the other cool things that are showing up on the screen, and I'll see you next time.